Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Sick MRI, and this is a patient who is 30 years old. He had jaw surgery about four days ago, and since then has had profound weakness and severe pain in both of his shoulders. Can't elevate his shoulders at all. His arms are kind of limp at his sides. Horrible pain, and we suspected a brachial plexopathy because he's had prior surgery and a symmetric um, weakness in both shoulders, and, and this is exactly what we have. We have on the right-hand side, this is the humeral head, here's the glenoid, this is the back of the rotator cuff. If we go up to the top, this is the top of the rotator cuff, this is the supraspinatus up here, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor muscles are diffusely edematous, a lot of muscle swelling, and the exact same thing is going on the opposite side, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor muscles are profoundly edematous, muscle swelling. We can see this pretty good on a sagittal view here. Here's the subscapularis in the front that looks normal with the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. Muscles are swollen, edematous. And we can see this on the opposite shoulder. This uh, opposite shoulder, they may have had a little paralimbral cyst here as well. So this is bilateral edema and swelling. The suprascapular nerve, suprascapular nerve uh, innervates these two muscles here, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and then the teres minor is innervated by the axillary nerve, and both of these come off the posterior cord or the brachial plexus. So when patients have surgery sometimes with anesthesia, they can have compression of the brachial plexus, and they can get the nerves, the axillary to hit this, and the suprascapular nerves um, that come from the brachial plexus can have a neuropathy like this. So apparently you can get a brachial, a brachial plexopathy with surgery under anesthesia, the patient's arm. Sometimes they'll take the arm and pull it down. They have a little wrist cuff or a little wrist wrap, wrist wrap that'll pull the shoulder downward and that downward pressure sometimes can push on the brachial plexus. Apparently sometimes you can have something along the outside, a metal bar out here that pushes the humeral head medially. That can cause trouble. And sometimes they'll take the arm and abduct it. So the arm will be abducted and the humeral head will go down and that abducted position can compress the uh, contents of the brachial plexus. So several different uh, positioning problems can cause that. And for treatment, they don't need surgery. They usually just have physiotherapy and some uh, medication. So they want to have range of motion um, working all the time so they, they don't have any problems with a frozen shoulder and the pain can be really severe so they give them gadapentin and they give non inflammatories and uh, steroids um, to help the uh, swelling and uh, pain and inflammation. So with those conservative therapies patients usually get better but it takes a long time sometimes um, several months before they uh, get better but most people do get better with the conservative therapy. But a really pretty rare complication of surgery um, again, it's from compression of the brachial plexus under anesthesia and causes this uh, profound edema and terrible pain in the uh, rotator cuff muscles. Thank you very much.